I've won almost every single drama I've been in, even when I was on the losing side. I'm sure people are gonna say I'm reviving the drama, or that I'm doing this for money or something. But even if that is true, it doesn't debunk anything I'm saying. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little scared of the backlash I'll get from uploading this video. Both my roommate and my girlfriend try to talk me out of uploading it, but I have to do what I think is right. Who knows, maybe I'm the one in the wrong, but I still feel like I have to do this. Yeah, I don't know, dude. If you're girlfriend and your roommate are telling you not to upload a video you probably shouldn't post that video but hey what could possibly go wrong right fuck it dude why why not so i picked a very interesting story to base my first video on this channel on but holy shit guys this might be the funniest situation i've seen in quite a long time of being on the internet i'm telling you guys it's just that good let me try my best to summarize it and just focus on the really juicy important details because wow this is certainly one for the autistic history books let me tell you so our story begins with cindy bear who's an art youtuber with 500,000 subscribers up until recently she was well liked by everyone until a 200 page document was released exposing her for all kinds of various inappropriate behaviors i'll leave a link to this document in the description if you care to read 200 pages about some bitch you probably never even heard of before but the main thing you need to know that she was accused of was sending pornography to a minor's dms directly the minor was 14 and she was 20 just weeks away from turning 21 and yes she knew the age of the victim so this isn't some pyrocynical situation where you know she was unaware of the age she had no idea or it's not a situation where she was catfished and you know she's actually the victim no she knew damn well the age of the minor it was just stated outright in bold text she couldn't have missed it she knew damn well who she was talking to and i guess she just decided you know what fuck it i'm just gonna goon with this minor why why not she just decides to do that because she's a fucking freak and this is obviously grounds for disqualification from the planet. You know what I mean? Like, you can't, you just, there's no way you can defend yourself from this. You're just cooked. Like, once this information comes out, you're done. That's it. You don't get to be a YouTuber anymore. Especially an art YouTuber who's making videos for fucking children. But here's the funny part. So, while this information about Cindy Bear was being exposed, Cindy had just moved in with a fellow art commentary YouTuber, Birdie, who's an art community guy with 100,000 subscribers. Birdie was told this information about 24 hours before it was released. So, upon hearing it, he decides to leave Cindy's apartment and turns on her. He then released releases his own exposed video and 100 page document where he also accuses her of a bunch of stuff mainly the fact that she would touch him and grope him inappropriately which made him feel uncomfortable again i'll leave the full document in the description if you want all the details right so once these two documents release and birdie's exposed video comes out everybody in the art community starts covering this everybody starts talking about this right and even regular youtubers outside of the art community start hearing about the story and making videos shitting on cine and calling her a freak rightfully so that's when our boy just a robot hears about this whole situation. He begins to make a critical video on Cinny, but then he decides to make the worst mistake of his lifetime and befriends her. He scraps his video exposing her, and instead he makes an hour and a half long video defending her from the allegations. Now you might be wondering, like, how could he defend the indefensible? It's just impossible. Well, he tries, and it goes about as poorly as you could expect. Now I want to make this clear. I do not believe Cinny is a pedo. She more than likely would have done this with anyone regardless regardless of age. The 14 year old who made the doc even thinks that this is the case. So already, like, right off the bat, Just a Robot begins his defense with, like, the worst possible argument of all time by saying she would have done this with anyone. So? If she did this with adults, sure, nobody would give a fuck, right? Like, yeah, that would be fine if she was doing this with adults, but she didn't. She did this with a minor. So what's your argument? If you want to hate on Cindy for this, that's fine, but she's not a pedo. Now I know what some of you are going to say. Well, we're not saying she groomed a 14-year-old to get with them. She just groomed a 14-year-old to be more comfortable with conversations like this so she could coom. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I thought that at first, but it turns out that the minor was the one being inappropriate first, and she kept on pestering Cindy to talk about stuff like this. It's also important to note that this minor was a fan of Cindy's content. Content that includes Scootaloo being in very suggestive outfits. So now he's just making the argument that the minor engaged sexually first, so therefore Cinny's the real victim? Like, what are we even smoking here? Like, you have to actually think like a pedophile to even make this argument, right? Well, the kid just was... The kid was baiting me i i just fell for the kid's trap the kid was just too hot i just had to engage with the with the minor guys like what kind of argument are you making again you actually have to think like a pedophile to even logically come to that conclusion 
And also, what's with that last point that Just a Robot made where he said that Cinny's been making sexual content for years, so therefore the minor shouldn't have watched the content? Like, yeah, the minor shouldn't have watched the content, just like how Cinny shouldn't have preyed on the minor and groomed the minor and showed the minor porn and engaged in sexually explicit conversations with the minor. Like, why are you just victim blaming the minor in this particular situation by saying, oh, well, the minor watched her sexual content as if that's justification for what happened after? Like, obviously, minors should not watch sexual content, but you shouldn't prey on the minor. Like, you can't just justify one action because the minor was watching content that they shouldn't have. I don't even know, like, where he was going with that one. Yeah. Cinny should not have engaged with this minor. She was the adult in this situation, and what she did was incredibly, incredibly irresponsible. It also makes her look really, really sus. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. So he does make the argument. So that means Just a Robot does understand that, yes, Cinny is the adult in the situation. So what the fuck was your last point? Like, he just completely invalidated his point previously. It's almost like he's making this video with no script. Like, he's just kind of just shooting off the top of his head, and he's saying, like, one thing that sounds really pedophilic, but then he follows it up with an argument debunking the thing that he just said. Where is his head going with this one? Like, dude, who let this guy cook? Like, who let bro cook? Like, this is just one of the worst videos I think I've ever seen, and we're at the beginning of the video. That being said, though, it's important to point out that the thing that he just said about how Cinny looks really sus is just like a gross minimization of what Cinny did. Like, he's willing to concede that, yes, Cinny is the adult and go against the argument he just made, but at the same time, he still tries to, you know, be sneaky about it and minimize what she did by saying that, you know, oh, she was wrong, and yeah, she looks a little bit bad, she looks a little bit sus, but she's not a pedo. It's like, no, 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 dude. What she did doesn't just make her a little bad or a little sus. Like, come the fuck on. Is this a game of Among Us? Or are we just minimizing the fuck out of these grooming allegations to the point where we're just using, like, Among Us game terminology to describe what, you know, what she did or what she is? Cindy's not sus, dude. She's a fucking groomer. Yes, Cindy knew the minor's age. She asked early in the combo. Sure, she could have forgotten this person's age. I talk to a lot of people myself, and it's hard to keep track of stuff like this sometimes dude is he really saying this like oh sometimes i lose track of all the ages of the people that i sexed with or just talk generally with like i don't know what like obviously if you're having these explicit conversations with people the age of the person is something you're gonna know like you're not just going to just randomly forget especially oh my god i don't even know how to respond to that point that was just so bad then they started to talk about um not safe for work stuff but none of the not safe for work topics they went over were nearly half as bad as some people made them out to be like some of this quote unquote not safe for work stuff includes lyrics from the song i like big butts and i cannot lie i heard that in the shark tale movie i like square butts and i cannot lie Hey boss, big butts. I vey. Yeah, bringing up like the more defensible parts of the allegations to then dismiss like the indefensible parts is not the own you think it is. But what about the inappropriate pictures like her sitting on a pile of sand corpses while hugging boy? Is hugging porn now or something? There's also pictures of her in boy and bunny outfits. Woo, so scandalous. None of this stuff is actually hardcore corn. It's just softcore corn. For those of you who do not know what softcore corn is, well, think of it like the sexy jutsu from Naruto. Sure, it's a bit risque, but under the law, it would not be considered hardcore corn. What the fuck is this guy's moral compass at, right? Under his laws of morality, sending softcore porn to minors is bad, but not bad enough for him to care. <laughs> like, apparently. Like, that's where the standard is at for just a robot. Softcore porn to minors? Apparently, that's not bad enough to him. As long as you're not sending them, like, 20 BBC gangbangs or whatever. Like, that. that's too far. But softcore porn? Eh. We'll let it slide. No, dude, it's all bad. Just because Cindy wasn't sending like the worst, most grotesque, graphic IRL material to the minor 
doesn't mean that the shit that she was sending isn't totally unforgivable. But hey, man, at least all she sent was softcore, right? No hardcore was sent, right? This kept on escalating until Cinny, ah, uh, she sent the same not safe for work essaying comic to this minor and requested this minor to draw even more corn of the character of Boy and Nightmare Sans. From the censoring job, it looks like a few parts of this comic would have been legally classified as hardcore corn. Oh, so she did send hardcore porn, meaning that the point that you just made, once again, you've debunked. This guy keeps making arguments and then debunking those same arguments like a minute later. Like that's like a common theme in this video. He keeps saying shit, but then explaining to you something else that disqualifies the shit that he just said. The absolute worst thing Cinny sent was this picture of Boy fingering her avatar. However, it should be noted that the doc maker was not the one who censored this out. It was actually Cinny herself. When I first saw this, I thought, yeah, Cinny's guilty. But when I found out that she censored the worst parts of this comic herself, it made her look far less guilty than I was previously led to believe. So just to be clear on the timeline here, just a robot's like, well, the porn that she sent to the minor was softcore, not hardcore, so I'm willing to let it pass. Then he goes over the hardcore stuff that she sends, and he's like, ah, I can't defend that. But then he's like, well, she censored the private parts, so she sent censored hardcore porn. So therefore, once again, this is just something that, according to Just a Robot, you know, we can just look right past. We can be like, all right, you know, it was censored. Yes, it was hardcore. I know you just did a whole distinction between softcore versus hardcore, and now you've admitted that she sent hardcore, but she censored it, so it's okay. Like, anything that she does, he'll, he's able to rationalize and justify. He's able to just come up with an excuse on the spot, just pull something right out of his ass and just explain to the camera. And we're just supposed to walk away from this video being like, yeah, you know, she, I guess you're right. You know, she didn't do anything like that bad. Meanwhile, like the list of things she's done so far from this video just keeps stacking and stacking and stacking when it was already indefensible from the start. I agree that what Cinny did was wrong. I agree she was being irresponsible, but I do not think that Cinny is a groomer, a pedo, a child predator, or anything like that. After going through both of these massive documents in their entirety, I realized that they're just full of nothing. Oh no, Sunny drew a picture of her character in a sexy outfit. Oh no, Sunny said I like big butts, I cannot let you a minor. If the doc maker had to stretch so much, so many times to make such bad points to paint Sunny as a predator, then it stands to reason that it's not a good doc. They clearly didn't know what they were talking about, and they were just grabbing any piece of evidence they could to paint Sinny as a groomer. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of the grooming defense right there. Just like that, he's given us his conclusion, and we're just supposed to walk away thinking that Sinny really did nothing that wrong. You know, yes, she did some wrong things, but it's only a little bit bad and just makes her look a little bit sus. Like, I love how he just ends this part of the video off by just walking away and just saying, and just like that, she's not a groomer. Here's my cited sources. My eyes have seen the glory of the cleansing of YouTube. So this should be the end of the video, right? I mean, we've gone over just a robot's defense, his pitiful defense of Cinny. What else could possibly go wrong? Well, we barely scratched the surface because in this same video, remember, it's an hour and a half long. So why is the video so damn long? Well, most of this video is actually an interview between Just a Robot and Cinny. He decided to bring her onto this video, supposedly to ask her the hard hitting questions so that we can really get into her mind and see if she's full of shit or not, right? But in reality, what this segment is, is one of the most, it's actually more pathetic than the parts of the video that we've already seen. Like he brings her on the video and just immediately makes it clear that this is no interview at all. This is just clearly a puff piece. I mean, he's practically like on his knees kissing her feet. That's how pathetic it is. And you don't have to take my word for it. Let's get into some of the clips. Uh, okay, so here's my first question. I, I looked at the first doc. I, I desperately looked all over the first doc. I don't see any grooming going. Stupid. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, uh, Cindy had her uh, avatar in uh, sexual poses. And I was like, yeah, have you, have you not seen Naruto or any PG-13 anime? Like, no, I think a lot of that document was just complete horseshit, honestly. There were, of, of course, there were, like, some things that I do think were problems, like the actual issues. But a lot of it was just bullshit. 
Yeah, like, like I was looking at that and I was like, this is so much nothing. Like, okay, sure, there's there's some stuff in here, but like 90% of it was just nothing. Like you saying, oh, my character, this fan art someone made for me is sexy. It's like, oh no, they, she said sexy. I heard the word sexy in a fucking Shrek movie when I was a kid. Like, oh no. <laughs> Seriously? Like, this is how the interview starts? He goes to ask his first question, he's already saying, like, I think this whole thing's bullshit. Like, I, I think you're completely innocent, Queen. Like, they're mad that you said the word sexy to a minor? Like, I heard that in a Shrek movie. Like, this is just beyond tier three simping. And it's simping over a groomer. You know? Like, <laughs> it's... You're not simping for Pokemon here. It's not like he's has Pokemon on the stream and he's being a little bit cringy. You're simping over a groomer and including this in your puff piece. Like, do I even need to explain why this is wrong? I'm making a video, um, kind of going over why I don't believe I'm actually a groomer. Um... Oh, wow. I, why I don't you think you, why, why don't you think you're a groomer? It's because there's legitimately no evidence of you grooming. Is that why you think that? I will be completely honest. Um, I didn't even consider it to be grooming until Jack told me it was grooming. Oh and my fucking god. Completely. Of course you did. Of course you did. Because like, here's the thing. I looked through both docs. Okay. Were you talking appropriately? Yes. Were you grooming? No. So it, it, let me go off topic. So in the middle of this like passionate, like prostration in front of his grooming queen he mentions that he's gone through both of the documents but uh spoiler alert he went on chud logic stream later on and admitted that he didn't properly go through either of the documents did you look at the messages between cine bear and eno in full admittedly no i okay. i skimmed through a lot i i will i know that makes me the biggest a very big hypocrite because I was like, oh, people didn't right. look through this carefully. And I saw some people like looking through it, but like it was just like I looked through the first doc pretty carefully, but the first doc just had so much nothing. So let me get this uh, straight. Before you made this video, hardcore defending Cinebear, you didn't even go over the full logs in any way. It was was going to i was planning to do that i just so there you go when you listen to him say in his video and in the interview that he reviewed all the information and he's just so dumbfounded he's flabbergasted at how anybody could uh consider cine a groomer he's just he just doesn't get it he's reviewed everything and he's seen nothing he's lying to you like he's objectively lying so uh, let me go off topic cine are you can i call you cine is that how you say yeah. your name yeah, it's Sinny. Okay, I might accidentally call you Sunny by accident, but I'll, I'll try to call you Sinny. So, Sinny, like, let me ask you something. Are you, um, uh, you're straight, right? As far as I'm aware. Yeah, what, uh, now I'm straight too. I mean, no, no, sorry. Eno is a female, correct? I got the names mixed up. Um, Eno is AFAB, yeah. A AFAB, okay. So, yeah, you're, have you ever dated a woman? Um, when I was 14. Of course you did. What do you mean by that? Um, and we actually, I ended up breaking up with my girlfriend when I was 16 because I realized I didn't love her like that because I realized I, I don't like women like that. You were just a bit bi-curious, right? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh... Well, once I kissed an Italian guy, but that's not important right now. Bro, what the actual fuck am I listening to? Like, genuinely, why is this included in the interview? Where is he going with this? Is he trying to say, like, oh, well, this person you were talking to was a girl, or, and you don't like girls, right? As if that proves anything? So as this interview goes on, a lot of the stuff they talk about is boring and just useless information, right? But things take a very weird turn when Just a Robot questions Cinny on the groping allegations and the inappropriate touching allegations, because remember, Cinny's roommate, Birdie, accused Cinny of touching him inappropriately and groping him all the time and making him feel uncomfortable when asking Cindy about these allegations specifically just a robot immediately jumps in to excuse the sexual harassment and claim that this is normal 
as he tells weird stories that nobody asked for about him and his roommate. Apparently, they touch each other all the time. You, you guys should know that, by the way. It just gets so weird. Take a listen. Actually, that's something I've been meaning to ask you. So, like, they accused you of touching them inappropriately. Yeah, fuck him for even, like, insinuating that. Yeah, because I I'm going to get real here. Me and Professor Dreadlock... We're best buddies, and we, uh, we're romantic with each other. We slap each other on the ass every now and then. We spook each other. Uh, we, we don't poke each other in the crotch, but, um, we do pretty much everything else. And, uh, like, when I heard that, I was just like, you know, I, I know, uh, Jack goes by he, him, but, like, their sex is, they're an AFAB, and, uh... Yeah, he's AFAB. Yeah, so... Two women living with each other, they're going to, I'm, sh I don't know what it's like with two women living with each other, but I can tell you as a guy who lives with another guy, we, we sometimes touch each other a bit inappropriately. Once again, I'm just struggling to come up with commentary over this clip. I mean, the clip really just speaks for itself. You know, it's just one of those things that he says. It's just like, what are you even saying? Like, how could a human being even construct this response? Like, it's not even just bad because he's downplaying obvious sexual harassment. It's also bad just because he sounds fucking weird. He sounds weird and creepy and strange and just somebody I don't want to listen to. I, I, I think Jack doesn't understand what grooming is, and I've been getting a lot of my information from him. Um, because one of the things that I, I know I've said that was incorrect um, was, like... So Jack keeps saying that he was groomed by Kitty Dog when he was um, 12 and Kitty Dog was 14, and I believed him. Uh, uh okay, this, that's, that's not. I don't. I don't want to downplay his experience in like 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 that he was traumatized. I just. Now that I'm like going to therapy and and shit, um, I I don't think it was grooming actually. Uh, that doesn't sound fucking right. God, and uh, I feel fucking stupid for like making a video and, and defending that point. Uh. This is a really good part of the interview because it's like the one moment where even just a robot is like stunned at what he's listening to. He's listening to Cinny basically say that, well, Birdie thinks that I'm a groomer, but he doesn't really know what grooming is. I mean, after all, like, he claims that he was groomed by this other person, and I believed him for so long, but after I went to therapy, now I no longer believe that my friend was groomed. Now Cinny is just denying her friend's, like, childhood abuse or trauma as an argument for why she's not a groomer, which is, like, a point that's, like, so nuclear, it's, like, almost impossible to fathom. And just a robot is like, uh, uh, uh. Uh, 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 okay, this, that's, that's not. <sighs> but he's so cucked and pussy whipped that he doesn't have the balls to tell her, like, what the fuck are you saying, bitch? Like, slow down. Like, what, what are you talking about? Or at the very least, ask her some elaborating questions to be like, whoa, that's an interesting point. Like, let's get into this because that sounds like something that uh, you might want to expand on. Like, this is definitely, like, one of the best parts of the interview because it shows how compromised he is. He can't do anything. He, he has to just let her, like, spout insane shit. And even he's able to recognize some of the shit that she's saying that's just, like, batshit crazy. But he's too weak to verbalize it. Just a robot marches on. So I can just keep ripping this interview apart and just, you know, showing you more terrible, cringy clips. But I think at this point, we understand what's going on here. So what happened with this video? Well, the problem with Just A Robot's video, other than the fact that he was just defending a groomer, which is like an obviously indefensible position, is the fact that he was working on this video with Cinny the whole time. And he never disclosed that. He didn't disclose that in the video or in the interview or on Twitter or in the description or anywhere else. Nobody knew that just a robot and Cinny were actually working this video together although I guess it's kind of obvious given just how you know some of the
of these points were just so terrible. But in one part of the video, Juicer Robot makes the argument that by every definition of grooming, Cindy doesn't meet the criteria. And he shows like a screenshot or some research, right? I've checked multiple different definitions for grooming. What Cindy did doesn't fit any of them. Sure, what she did is what a lot of groomers do when they start grooming. Or who knows, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe I don't actually know what grooming is. Well, apparently that screenshot and that research was given to him by Cindy. And never once did he disclose that when making that argument in his video. He never said, by the way, Cindy told me that she doesn't fit the definition of grooming and she sent me this research to justify her claim. He didn't say that. He presented that claim as if that was his point when it was Cindy's the whole time. And in case you're wondering how we even have the DMs between Just a Robot and Cindy, well, she leaked them to Chud Logic, who was doing a stream against Just a Robot. This is not, this is not a, this is not a good, oh, what's this I'm being sent? Oh no. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, what is this now? Looks like I've got the DMs between Cinebear and just the robot here, would you believe it? Wow, someone's just sent this to me. So when just a robot in his interview was begging on his hands and knees to Cindy, please don't backstab me. I'm throwing it all away for you, queen. Please don't backstab me. I'm gonna go now, but here's one, one thing I want you to, to tell you. It's gonna be a hard uphill battle, but, and I'm gonna help you out through this, okay? But mm -hmm. I'm gonna ask you something. Mm -hmm. Okay. Please do not backstab me. I don't plan on it, I'm okay. not an asshole. Okay, it, it's just, I have to ask that because it happens a lot. I I don't know why this keeps happening. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm gonna help you through your drama, okay? Oh, uh, thank you, Jar. Oh, you're welcome, Peaches. Anyways, I'm going to go tell a <laughs> bunch of people your race is behind your back. Oh, this sounds great, Peaches. Well, guess what? She completely backstabbed him by releasing all of her correspondence with just a robot. And because she did that, we can see that this whole entire situation went deep. In fact, you can even see that multiple times throughout this conversation, he's like actively consoling her and trying to give her advice on how to cover the situation up. So he's like saying, why did you upload it so early in the morning? That's one of the worst times to upload a video. I'll check it out. She says, I don't know, I'm freaking out. I really shouldn't have looked at the comments. Just a robot, can I call you to tell you what to do? She says, no, not right now. I'm gonna pass out. He says, okay, Okay, just keep in mind, Peach's first video responding to everything didn't go over well, so hopefully you'll get me to give you tips on what to do with the second one. She says, okay, sorry if I'm scaring you. He says, I just don't want you to give up. You should really have shown me this before you uploaded it. Also, monetizing the video wasn't a good move. I like money, but with something like this, it's best to just do it later on. It will be an uphill fight, but slowly more and more will see the light. And he keeps going on. He's like, it's not the end of the world. Trust me, after my video comes out, a few more will see the light, but I will get a lot and I mean a lot of backlash. Also, you need to show a lot more proof on the screen next time. I can tell you rushed the video a little bit, but as I said before, it's not the end of the world. You can still win this drama. You don't need to worry. You're going through a lot. My fucking God, this is stressful, but I know you are going through a hundred times more than me. I just hope my video makes things better, not worse. It's cool. You're going through a lot. Nice pussy. Yeah, don't worry. That was not actually a picture of her pussy. It was her cat and he was making a joke he also makes another joke where he says want to see my cock or something like that and he sends a picture of a rooster you know these two things could just be seen as just autistic jokes but he also does beg her to get into a call with her late at night because he just can't sleep and he just wants somebody to talk to which i'm sorry you just don't do that to somebody you hardly know or hardly have any attraction to for that matter like obviously if you wanted to get into you know some sleep calls some discord sleep calls or whatever you're probably attracted to the person that you want to do this with otherwise that's just fucking weird sorry i just got worried because you didn't react at all sorry if i bothered you it's cool one of vc right now don't we have the same time zone it's 5 a.m just a robot says i couldn't sleep i took drugs adderall to get my video and you remade i like adderall but sometimes it keeps me from sleeping she says oops well i took melatonin also my video is up and i'm having a breakdown and this like obsession with wanting to get into sleep calls with her continues on multiple different days here's like another example. I just need someone to chat with as I drift off to sleep. You can just say no. I'll take that as a no, lol. We weren't going to chat about anything important. I just like talking with anyone as I pass out. Good night. Like, again, I can't stress this enough. He made this video in defense of this person because he wanted to fuck her. Obviously, he denies that on Chud's logic stream when Chud asks him directly, like, do you have some sort of attraction with her? Although he does say that because he's a heterosexual male, of course he has attraction to her. A after all, all heterosexual men are attracted to 
every woman instantly. So, of course, he had some level of attraction. But don't worry, guys. He has a girlfriend who he loves very much, who was actually watching the stream the whole time. Like, what a disaster. Here's what I believe based on reviewing these logs. In the course mm -hmm. of pursuing this story, you spoke to Cine Bear and you developed some sort of attraction or interest in them beyond the purely professional one. This has then led you to frame the video in a certain way. And this is the architect now of your pain. This connection that you've made, this non-disclosed connection, which is a complete conflict of interest and should never have happened. What say I, you? I have no romantic interest. I, I, I'm i very friendly with the way I talk. Uh, you can I can show the logs I've had with other people um, if they'll give me permission, but I'm very friendly. I have a girlfriend. I have no sexual interest in Cine at all. But you, um, do, but, okay, 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 let's say no, that. I, so, go on. No, no, actually, I want to take... No, no. I have... Okay, maybe I do have sexual interest in Cine. I mean, I'm a straight guy, come on. So I'm, I'm going to walk back on that. But I have a girlfriend. I'm not... Um... And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. That's all you need to hear right there. That explains this entire situation. He buckles under the pressure and he just admits what we all could realize very quickly after watching that interview and seeing the DMs. But you know the best part? He doesn't even know what she looks like. He's only heard her voice. Um, no, I have never seen Cine Bear's face, ever. I have borderline no idea what she looks like. Um. Holy shit, that's rough. You threw it all away for a girl who's a groomer, and you don't even know what she looks like. Come on, man.